Hi, welcome to Perry Pierre podcast. I am your host, Perry Pierre. Our guest today is Fulu Mugovani. She's a South African actress. Her latest film, Seriously Single, was recently released on Netflix. So, Fulu, welcome. How's it going? <laughs> Thank you for having me. I'm, I'm good. I'm good. How are you? I am, uh, I am, I'm good. Um, thanks. Uh, you know, it's been a lot going on this year and, yeah. um, the passing of, uh, of Shadrach Boseman, um, yeah. just, it just so, uh, devastating. Um, were you, were you a fan of Shadrach, by the way? Oh, I was a big fan. I, I, I don't know anybody who wasn't. I mean, he is T'Challa to us. He is, you know, Black Panther. So, uh, it's, it, it hit home. I mean, it, yeah, it's, it's sad. Also, um, amidst everything that's happening around black people, this is just, I, I didn't see this coming. Yeah. So you were born and raised in Venda in South yes. Africa, right? So tell me a little bit about uh, growing up in, uh, in Venda. Wow. Um, <laughs> it was, it was beautiful. It was home and um, many people in South Africa call it, you know, Vanderland. It's the homelands, you know, that's where, you know, most of our fruits and vegetables are, mm. are harvested. Um, that's where you get your bananas, your pineapples, your, your nuts, you know, and just growing up and having a mango tree in my backyard and a banana and lychee trees and avocados. That for me was very normal. And, um, but I must say, I, I had an, um, an idea of how blessed I was, even just growing up. Um, mm-hmm. But it, it, it kind of magnified when I came to Johannesburg to study for my musical theater degree. But mm-hmm. nonetheless, growing up in Venda was beautiful. I was surrounded by my elders, by my grandparents, my parents. And we were just, I mean, we were middle class, middle class. So we, we lacked nothing. My parents really worked really hard to mm-hmm. provide for for me and my three siblings um yeah so your daddy's a music professor did he kind of like instill performing in you yeah definitely um i think i had the gene nonetheless i had it in me innately but i think just growing up you know surrounded by 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 him uh, he influenced me even in just the music that he played and you know, he he swap genres in like a day. I'd listen to everything. It mm. wasn't until I really wanted to study music that I discovered that I also want to just go into the acting and just let's just do performing arts. Let's just call it performing. Arts. I did my research. I found out there's actually a course called musical theater. Mm. And I was like, wow, okay, this is this is what I want to do. Wow, that's um, that's quite fascinating. Uh, do you have a favorite musical play? Yeah, definitely. Um, I can't say favorite, favorite, but I mean, it, it differs. The one that really sparked the, the musical theater, the desire to be on stage was Ragtime. Mm. And I just remember watching Audra McDonald and I was just like, who is this girl? Who's this woman who sings and acts beautifully? And I just, I remember for the longest time, I just wanted to be Audra, Audra McDonald. I just wanted to be her. Mm. And, um, I mean, your classics like Oklahoma, but that really didn't, they, did, they didn't feed me as much as watching people that looked like me on stage. Even, mm-hmm. although I wouldn't call it, you know, I wasn't deliberately wanting and sorting out, you know, black musical theater artists. I just really was drawn to them and drawn to their present on, presence on stage. And the one person that really, I followed her works was definitely Audra McDonald, definitely mm-hmm. her. Um, she's a standout for me for, for many reasons, but her voice is magnificent. So rack time, it, it gave me that gene right now. I'm, I'm listening to, you know, dear Evan Hansen because it's, it's a beautiful score. <laughs> so I try to keep up with all the contemporary musicals, but rack time got it all started. Oh, okay. Wow. So I know you, uh, you went from being a student in, uh, Chihuahua, um, to a working actress in Hong Kong. Right. How did that happen? Um, I was actually, I was doing my third year, uh, which I thought would be not my final year because I was anticipating doing my fourth year Mm -hmm. Uh, in musical theater. You do four years and then you get your degree. Mm 
So mm -hmm. nonetheless, I, they, were, they had open auditions at Baseline, which is like a very a common place where they had theater auditions. They were open call auditions. So you can imagine everybody's there. You wait in line for hours and hours. Mm -hmm. Nonetheless, I went, me and my, my, my schoolmates, we went there and uh, I auditioned and I got a call back for the next day, which was a Sunday. Mm -hmm. And I went back and I remember being very intimidated because, you know, Africans can sing, you know, they sing and they <laughs> yeah. belt those notes. And I wasn't so much as a singer at the time. And I wasn't so confident. I wasn't confident, you know, incorporating the singing to interpret or to tell a story mm -hmm. on stage with my acting. So it went hand in hand, but those auditions called for singers, like you needed to yeah. belt, you know? <laughs> um, yeah. And I remember wanting to leave once I heard this, uh, this girl that was inside because it's not soundproof you know you can hear everything and I was like oh my god I'm not going to do this mm -hmm. and I remember uh, a boyfriend at the time was like no you, you know you can do this just go in there you have nothing to lose they don't know you mm -hmm. and I went in there I sang Shadowland and I belted the high note and I cracked but I kept going mm -hmm. and I remember just compensating my my singing with my acting at the time and they loved me and I was like, hey, listen, I'll see you in Hong Kong. And I remember them laughing, laughing, laughing. And, and oh, you I told them I just, that? <laughs> yeah, I was like, I'll see you soon, you guys. And they're like, sure. I'm like, I can't wait to see. I've never been to Hong Kong, by the way. And I can't wait, you know. And um, I think also that was just me being, I was very uncomfortable afterwards because I really screwed up my audition. And I was just like, just chum your way out of here, you know, at least just leave mm -hmm. them with a smile. And um, a month later, they called me and I was back home in Venda, actually, because there was school break for us. They mm -hmm. called me and they told me, Fulu, they called me Fulu, <laughs> mm -hmm. you come into Hong Kong. I was like, oh my goodness. I was excited. So that was my first job. That was my first gig. Oh, okay. And for how long were you in Hong Kong? Um, just over a year. Just oh, over a year. Okay, okay. So a year and a few months. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I've had uh, the opportunity to visit Hong Kong, etc. Yeah, it's a it's an interesting city. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's a huge culture shock, but I got yeah. used to it very quickly, and I got to appreciate some. You know, I went sightseeing, and I got to appreciate various parts of of the of Hong Kong. It has beautiful places, beautiful places. Um, tell me a little bit about that experience. Wow. Um, to be completely honest with you, it was a dream, and. And coming from musical theater, mm -hmm. I mean, being on the Lion King is, is your dream. Is, is, right. Is, yeah. It is, absolutely. It is <laughs> definitely, you know, just even just watching it uh, on the stage is amazing. So can you imagine being a part of it? So I obviously was one of those people that wanted to be a part of it and being a part of it and playing the role of Nala was like a pinch me moment. But to be completely honest, it was very challenging for me. Like I said, vocally, um, I am a mezzo and I'm, I'm very comfortable with saying that now, but at the time I, 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 it was hard for me to accept that I'm a mezzo. I wanted to be a soprano. I wanted to sing the high notes like every the girl that I knew could sing. Mm -hmm. And so failing to do that really, you know, screwed up with my self-esteem, but, mm -hmm. you know, so it means I, it meant, it meant that I had to find new and creative ways to, to best interpret that character on stage so that I not only did justice to her but also kind of stood out because I liked standing out I liked that I was the youngest at the time because there were three of us and we wrote we rotated you know okay and so that spontaneity that I, I brought to stage I found myself booking a lot of corporate events and I found myself you know they they, they book us to they book me uh, as the Nala that would perform for like you know, corporate companies that would come to Disneyland to watch us. So that was, you know, a big compliment and that was validating that, okay, what you're doing is good. Mm -hmm. But after a year of doing the same thing and, and just doing that, I realized, Hey, since I've been compensating my singing with my acting and my charisma on stage, I think I really want to do this acting thing like mm -hmm. as a whole and just really devil into it, you know, commit. And I remember telling my superiors at the time saying, listen, I'm going to go back to South Africa. I'm not going to renew my third contract because they were giving it to me. And I remember saying, I'm not going to accept. Um, I'm going back to school. Mm -hmm. They're like, okay. So the excuse I told them was I'm going back to school. 
But in the bottom of my heart, I knew I'm not going back to school. I'm going to pursue my career in film and television because this is what I want to do. And that's exactly what I did. So yeah, Hong Kong, you know, playing Nala, being in The Lion King, it was, it was a beautiful, it, it, it got this whole started. It, 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 it gave me my dream of being in the theater and, and playing out the, you know, musical theater, what I studied for, you know, but mm-hmm. at the same time, it sparked that desire for, for acting. Have you, have you seen the, the live action of uh, Lion King? I actually haven't. I, I, I want to, obviously, but I, I haven't. I wish to. <laughs> yeah, I think I check it out. But, so, I mean, obviously, I'm guessing you were a fan of the animated one, right? Of course, yeah. And the, and the, theater, and the, and the live one. But I only saw a few snippets of it, you know, yeah. bootlegged on YouTube or whatever. But, I mean, there's, it's nothing like the actual experience. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah absolutely. Um, so any interesting stories from uh, working on Scandal? Scandal. Scandal was, let's say, my first breakthrough television role on South African screens, the television screens, because it's a soap. It's a well-known soap in the country. Mm-hmm. So, and my character's name was Hanzani, Anzani. And she, it became a household name because, you know, she was very lovable, very young. She was a photo, photojournalist. Mm-hmm. And um, I must say, the producers and the directors gave me beautiful stories that challenged me um, as an actress. You know, they were very, they were, what can, how can I put it? The stories were, were different. And, mm-hmm. you know, it, it allowed for me to explore different dynamics uh, of my, the skill that I, I had, I don't know, dabbled into. Mm-hmm. And um, it, it, was, it was a great experience, all around experience. I was there, I think, for three years. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I remember I shot Ayanda, which was my first feature film while I was still at Scandal. So I, I had to ask time off Scandal to, to shoot, you know, Ayanda. Mm-hmm. And that's another, that's another, you know, that's another story. But I remember leaving Scandal. I knew that it was time for me to leave. I just knew that I had grown, you know, my experience there. I had grown, I, I'd grown the character that I was playing, and I felt like I wasn't challenged right. anymore. And I okay. felt that, yeah, the environment wasn't right for me. But um, it's it's been the it's been one of the highlights of my career in television. Okay, okay. And uh, what about uh, Ayanda? Um, and that was and Ayanda was your first uh, feature film. Um, yeah. Do you have to audition for it, or is it like through uh, because of your, um, you know, appearances on on uh, on? Actually, M- I've had to audition for everything that I've ever gotten. I've never been mm-hmm. called to, like I've always had to audition, um, and I don't mind it because I, I know you know greats, the people that are called greats in South Africa, great artists and actors that are still auditioning at this time award-winning yeah, no. actresses and actors. So I, I don't mind auditioning. So I, I was called into audition. And I remember at the time they were, when they, re, when they tell me the story, they say they were exhausted and they, they'd seen so many girls. And when I came in, they were like, okay, let's do this. I was the last person to be called in. And um, I remember knowing that this is my role. Mm-hmm. I knew that this is mine and I knew, and I just, you know, I just, at the time I prayed to God and I, I told the universe, listen, this is happening. Help me to nail this audition because this is what is standing in the way of me and just playing the title role. Mm -hmm. And I auditioned at the time with my mom, who, um, (laughs) Tati Mushesh, who plays my mom, sorry, in the, in in the, in the movie. Mm -hmm. And I went for it. And I remember I did things that I'd never done before. I cried, Mm -hmm. like just, I felt it and I would just lift it at the moment and she looked at me and she just played and she, she aided me and I, I did the same. Mm-hmm. And it was just the, it was, it was the best audition I've ever had in my entire life. The best. Mm-hmm. So being cast, I was like, yes, I am. And they're like, you are Ayanda. I was like, I agree. And so um, mm-hmm. the audition process was amazing, but the shooting process too was, was just amazing. You know, I'd never worked with a female director before. 
mm-hmm. and she brought a different vibe you know she was there she she was very honest with me very honest i mean after a take she'd she call cut she'd come to me she'd say fulu i don't believe you mm. and that was the first time somebody ever called me on my acting you know yeah, yeah. and like that's whack what do you do i'm like what do you mean she's like no 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 there was no truth in what you did go in there i want i want you to go in there this is our take if you do it we're done we're moving on i was like okay i gave it to her whether it was an emotional scene or a love scene or whatever she just always encouraged me to feel everything because mm-hmm. she said if you don't feel it we will we can tell you know and so shooting that and having sara bletcher who was the director just support me that was a dream come true i must say that was a dream come true uh so i guess needless to say uh that she made you a better actress in the in the course of shooting this right oh yeah oh yeah she she made me believe in myself and she made me trust in my feelings if i feel it if i feel it then the audience well even before the audience if i feel it the camera will catch that because yep. i i needed to trust the beauty of camera you know trust my dop because of you know that knowledge that is instilled in me with the theater in the theater world you know it's very big and jazz hands and it's very emotive but you know she 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 was like fulu i know you you think you did you did this with television but with film trust me i'll catch every single thing i'll catch every single thing so trust yourself and i must give credit to to my co-stars you know the the lady that was playing my mom tati mushesh we're still great friends now she's one of my closest friends and she was just there for me you know and and the dynamics changing from her being you know my my role model somebody i watched on tv since i was a little girl and being so close to her during that shooting process it was it was beautiful and calling her my peer or my colleague you know I was oh. like oh my goodness <laughs> i mean it didn't mean we're on the same league but it just meant that it means i'm doing something right and having her talk to me in between takes and you know giving me some advice and whether she knows it or not everything she told me i take it as advice and i use it every single day so it was just a beautiful four months for me yeah wow um so how did um winning an africa movie academy award change the course of your career um i must say it didn't <laughs> to be quite honest changing the course of my career it didn't change it at all mm. um changing how i felt about myself it it validated my my path all the more it it reassured me that i'm on the right track all the more that i'm not just a south african artist you know even people in africa all like throughout the continent love and appreciate my work mm-hmm. but in changing the course of my career it didn't because at the time i remember I wasn't doing so well in terms of work. I was actually not doing well at all. Um I was, you know, I was getting gigs here and there. I was a call act. I was being called in. So even when we had the trip to Nigeria, we had to fly ourselves. We had to like the you know, they didn't pay for anything. And I remember thinking, do I really want to go? I can't afford to go. I can't afford to get a dress and and everything just worked for me and I ended up going. And I remember my 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 husband at the time who was my boyfriend was like, "Love, we'll make it work just you just have to go it's a beautiful experience you were nominated against all these amazing you know west african and north african and you know mm. central african artists and just go and for me just going was enough you know just to be amongst all those people but winning was like wow thank you god you know <laughs> but it didn't i came back to the same situation so I, it's not like everybody else saw me differently it's not like casting directors saw me differently or producers saw me differently so it didn't change any path to be quite honest okay okay well thanks for your honesty um, yeah. so what is what is a uh, one thing about the south african movie market that you know most people outside of it wouldn't think of right now i think that you'd be surprised we we our film etiquette has has really developed and I'll explain. Mm-hmm. So before I mean from my from an outside point of view I thought you just get there you just shoot there's a director there's like people running around and there's not really much discipline mm-hmm. um because we associate that with you know Hollywood films and films 
you know, when we're watching behind the scenes, we see all this, you know, there's an order. Mm -hmm. um, but there's the same order in, in South African film scenes, you know, and I just, I just really, I've come to really respect that as my space. Uh, coming from a theater background, I know there's the certain order with theater etiquette and mm -hmm. we respect it so much because, you know, of its history being a form of worship and all these other things. But now coming in the film set, I realize that the same order is applied obviously differently to adhere to the film, to the film culture and the film environment, you know, and mm -hmm. I just respect, you know, people like assistant directors and oh, yeah. like, you know, the runners and gaffers and, and people that, you know, that pick me up, you know, people that, wait for us sometimes when you're late and they drive us to sit and the crafts people I respect the people that get our breakfast ready and the makeup people and the standby you know all these little all these people they really matter and for me it's 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 just it's how everything just works harmoniously and that's the one thing that I think just know when you're coming from America or you're coming from the UK or wherever you are when you come here, it's the same respect. It's the same beauty. It's that machine. It's well oiled. I, I, I guarantee that. I can guarantee that. And that's the, what I love about our, our industry. I am obviously aspiring to get into Hollywood because that's a bigger audience, mm -hmm. but I'm realizing that with Netflix now, anything is possible. You know, I'm talking to you mm -hmm. and, from America and I'm all the way in South Africa and you were able to watch my film because of Netflix and that platform that they have allowed us to share our stories to a, a big audience, you know? So yeah. as much as I'm still aspiring for Hollywood, I'm realizing that our work can be seen and heard by, by a wide audience too. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I guess we can uh, use that as a, as a segue to uh, get into seriously single. <laughs> um, so, so, so you said before that you've always auditioned for, for a uh, series for single. So, um, um, what was a little bit different about, uh, about getting cast um, in that production? Um, the first thing was I never thought I'd be cast in this role <laughs> because <laughs> Um, I never pictured myself as somebody or a girl like Dineo. Mm -hmm. um, so I, did, I thought my directors can see right through me and they don't think this is organic. This is not going <laughs> to be an organic fit. They're like, she is bullshitting. This is not going to work. But they called me for a callback like twice. I was like, well, okay. It means they see something. And, you know, with those callbacks came, I mean, a confidence that I had, you know, with every callback. Because I was like, oh, okay. It means I got this, you know. Mm -hmm. And just that just proved to me all the more that, okay, it means I am an actress, you know, and because I must act, you know, I, I play pretend, I play different characters. So I can't always be safe. I can't always play a photojournalist or a tomboy or a quiet person or a free spirited young girl. I can play, you know, a young serial data who just, who just wants love so badly and sometimes to her own downfall and a detriment, you know? So um, it was fun and light and, I loved playing this character because not only it's fun and light, but for me, it was also challenging. Somebody can be like, what do you mean challenging? You know, you didn't do any hardcore emotional scenes, but rom-coms are challenging because I don't have the funny bone. I don't have comic timing. You know, I'm not a comedian, yeah. Um, yeah. but I had to do it and trust. And I mean, it was wonderful working with Tumi Murake who plays Dineo's best friend, Nani, because mm -hmm. then she aided me and she's a South African comedian. So she, she helped me and she advised me everywhere. That, and it was just nice playing together, you know. Mm -hmm. And once again, just trusting that this is my path and this is my journey. And yeah. that was the beauty of finally conquering Seriously Single. It was not the most fun to do because mm -hmm. I'm a perfectionist. And as much as I had fun on set, mm -hmm. I woke up every morning thinking, how the hell am I going to do these scenes today? How am I going to pull through today? Because to me, those scenes were so challenging, more challenging than any other, like just being drunk in the club, dancing. I'm whack at dancing. I'm not a dancer. <laughs> just, just being quirky. I was like, how am I going to do this? So I was so like, it was the, like, it really was waking up like, Oh my goodness. Another day. How am I going to do this? How am I going to do this? And right when I had the hang of it, we were done. <laughs> Isn't that something? <laughs> 
But right when I thought, hey, I got her, I got, I got Janelle, like, yeah. we were rapping. So that was well, it. Well, maybe you can use some of it for the sequel. <laughs> sure. <laughs> there is. I hope I still have it in me. Yeah, totally. <laughs> were you able to draw from your own experiences to portray this character? I was, like my varsity days, you know, I was a little bit, but I was also able to draw from just not only my lived experiences, but just watching. Like I remember Haley on Modern Family, you mm-hmm. know, she's she's a wide version of your Daniel. She's very Daniel. She's just mm-hmm. carefully wild and she drinks whatever she's like that. And also just some of my friends who are single and mingling, <laughs> yeah. you know, being that I'm married, yeah. uh, I needed something current because, you know, I can't tap into those old memories because they're it's just going to be vague and I'm just going to go over the surface. But I'm talking to my girlfriends now and they're telling me they're on Tinder and they're telling me they want on a date and then, oh no, you know, I don't remember his name and this happened. And, oh, I'm just looking for love, Fulu, you know, just, this is the one, this guy's the one, you know, just that conversation, mm-hmm. that, that was very current and real. So I drew a lot. Um, I drew some of the, inspir- well, most of it, to be quite honest, from my girlfriends and their stories they told me. So how long was the, was the shoot? It was just a month. Oh, it was just a month. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, just a month, yeah, including rehearsals. Oh, including okay. Rehearsals, yeah. Hey, that was fine. We were shooting tirelessly. Like, we were shooting um, six days a week for 12 hours. So we mm. only had Sundays off. So, yeah. Wow. Wow, okay. So, um, describe, describe the feeling when you got the news that the film gonna, was going to be on Netflix. To be quite honest with you, I was disappointed. I was like, oh, man. I was really hoping for it to be on, you know, circuits, to be on cinemas and to watch myself on the big screen. Mm-hmm. I always love that, you know, that's, it's just nice to see yourself and to walk the red carpet mm-hmm. and, you know, another film on the box office for me, I just felt like another film because I had done Ayanda. So I thought, oh, this would be, you know, another tick on, you know, another box to tick. But once it sunk in, once we started doing promos and once I realized, hey, wait a minute, Netflix is a big deal. Mm-hmm. And I realized that, okay, this is a bigger deal than I thought. Mm-hmm. Once that sunk in, I was really, really excited, really so excited. And, and once it, it, you know, once it was released and then I got the feedback from people, not just people that I knew, but, you know, people from America, people from South America, you know, we had people from Brazil and um, Ecuador and Colombia and people from Hong Kong too. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh my goodness, you know, my West African brothers and sisters were hitting me up in the DMs. I was like, oh my God, you guys. So <laughs> I guess it really was a big blessing for me in disguise because I didn't see how much of a blessing it would be. I thought it was like, oh, it was a plan B, like, oh, okay, I guess it's okay. And, <laughs> and I was like, no, girly, this is a complete beautiful lemonade that God then went and made, you know. <laughs> Yeah, no, I mean, Netflix, Netflix is, is a big deal. And uh, I mean, especially especially now, I mean, I guess it it, it, it even makes more sense. I don't know if, he, if they're opening back the movie theaters in South Africa, but like in America, most of them are, are not open. So, so like a lot of people are, you know, or that's what they do. Like when they need to watch a movie, they go to Netflix mm-hmm. or Disney Plus um, or the other platforms. So so um so yeah and it's 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 a form of rival too to the yeah cinemas, and i mean know? this could be our new normal yeah <laughs> you know because I, mean, I, I don't think i'm going to be going to the cinemas anytime soon yo oh my god me i i miss the cinemas i used to go to the movies three times a week um the last time i went was on march 10th and um and yeah and i, I miss it i feel like honestly one of the things that i miss the most um you know with this with this whole pandemic it's mm-hmm. you know it's the cinemas like i just love this is the experience i mean it's true i still it's watch true. netflix movies yeah. yeah yeah but like to be in a movie theater and to share this that big screen the popcorn exactly. and, mm. yeah the sound the, everything do you, you know? go to the movies alone like me i go to the movies alone i don't do dates at the movies because i just feel like it's pointless <laughs> i do dates too but i've 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 had you know um a lot of films on my own as well because sometimes there are movies that i want to watch and i just want to be there and like watch the yeah. film and and you know and and kind of like learn from it and as as much as like 
I get entertained, but like I just like, yeah, this is this is this thing, this is that thing, you yeah. know. Um yeah. so so yeah, I go to the movies sometimes on my own as well. Um so who's your favorite South African actress and who's your favorite American, if I must say, Hollywood actress? Hmm. My favorite South African actress, I have two. Mm-hmm. There's Mutidi um, mm-hmm. and there is Ntati Mushesh. So those are my two favorite South African actresses. Mm-hmm. And you said American actress too. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go with uh okay oh i have a few in different categories okay. i'm just, just gonna give it to you so i like meryl because who doesn't but also i just love meryl because she's she's so good at what she does she meryl really street? is she is yeah meryl street mm-hmm. I'm calling her like i know her first name is <laughs> meryl <laughs> um i love meryl street she yeah. she's like the beyonce of the acting industry for me Mm-hmm. I also love, um, oh man, who's that girl that did, uh, Gina Rodriguez? Is it Gina Rodriguez? Oh, which movie? Um, Jane the Virgin. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Is it Gina? Yeah. Um, I just, I mean, personally, I had to unfollow her on Instagram because I felt like, mm, why did you go and do that? But in terms of her craft and her talent, I really... I really just want to pick a brain like her choices are amazing and she just is a natural actress and I love that about her. She really just becomes. Um, and I really, 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 really love Viola Davis. I just really do. I know it's like really, um, I, lo- I know a lot of people love her, but, mm-hmm. and for different reasons. And I'm just going to go and become one of those people. She is our own Meryl. And I think, she can play anything. She can play Superman, and I would believe it. <laughs> yeah. Um, so those are my top talented. three. She is yeah. really, and she she's just so sincere and honest in all her roles, and she she just gives it her all, and I just love her commitment. You know, I just really love her commitment to this craft. I really just she I can see she loves this. I really can see she loves what she does. So those three are my top three. Yeah, I must I must also add that um, Viola Davis. Uh, she's been an advocate for, you know, for the betterment of, of black people, and she's mm. been like, a, you know, she's been like supporting and uh, uh, giving her voice to the whole Black Lives Matter movement. Mm. And uh, you know, I really appreciate that about her. Also, she has a movie that's coming out. It's uh, it's called Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, and Chadwick Boseman actually was in it oh. as well. Oh, yeah. I just got chills. Is there a trailer up yet? Uh, no, I don't think it's up. I think it's recently finished. So, so yeah, August Wilson is uh, he's a playwright. He he also wrote um, the 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 play to the movie Fences. Which oh wow, oh, wow. Yeah. Fences and Denzel Washington. Exactly, so exactly. Good. Yeah, yeah. Marini's Black Bottom actually Denzel produced it. And what's interesting also is that that was my favorite play in college. So, you know, I, um, you know, I don't know if you noticed, I, I studied trauma and theater in college and, and mm. I used to be a huge fan. Um, so what's interesting is that I went to a school, even though it was in Queens and Queens is very diverse, Queens, mm-hmm. New York. Um, but most of the plays that I came across um, because mm-hmm. in my drama and theater program, it was mostly white people. So most of the plays that I came across mm-hmm. were like, were like white plays. Yeah, exactly. And then I came mm-hmm. across August Wilson, you know, with the uh, plays mm-hmm. like, you know, Fences and Marini's Black Bottom. I did a monologue from that, from that, from that, mm-hmm. um, yeah, from that thing. And, and yeah, it was just like, oh, wow. It was just like, oh. so, so which one do you uh, prefer? Singing or acting? Acting. <laughs> Denzel Washington or Will Smith? Denzel. Are you kidding me? <laughs> hey. Okay, okay, okay. So, so, so here's why I always tell people. First of all, let, let me let me point out that Denzel Washington and I we share the same birthday. We were both <gasps> born. Yep, we were both born on December twenty eighth. Um, wow. Yep, yep. We share the same Good birthday. Good for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and we have we have another we have some other similarities. Um, because Denzel, when he first started in school, he 
what he wanted to 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 do is what I wanted to do as well. And then we switched paths, and then eventually we ended up doing theater and and everything. So so I always yeah I always think of it like oh my god there is something there. If I'm just considering acting acting, I'd go to the mm-hmm. cell. But if mm-hmm. I'm considering the embodiment of what a movie star could be or is sure okay yeah yeah I would go to uh to Will Smith. So okay um yeah so uh do you I, think- I can hear that mm-hmm. I can hear that yeah do do you think uh the South African market has potential to to be a rival to Nollywood? Uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> definitely. I think. Oh yeah, I think the only thing we're missing is numbers. We're missing numbers as in getting our own people to watch our own stories and to invest in going to the cinema and not waiting for them, you know, to come out on DVD or to just go ahead and bootleg them. But I think the only thing we're missing is numbers, but I feel like we have surpassed um, Nollywood in terms, not of the market, but in terms of production value, in terms of, like I said, the film etiquette, in terms of our stories, um, for sure. Um, I, I admire our industry so bad, so much, because we always, pushing the boundary we always want to produce the best work the best work is cinematography the best acting the best score um we always trying to produce the best and i see that because i work in the film industry because i see the work that goes into just not even you know while shooting but the pre-production i see how the art department you know prepares for every set they literally dress sets from scratch all the sets we, we shot with doing seriously single, those were empty spaces. You know, mm. my apartment was an empty block somewhere in CBD, Maboneng in Johannesburg. And the art department came in, literally dressed it from the paint to the everything. So I, that's what I'm saying. I mean, we are, we are competitors. We can crush them. I just, just, the only thing is getting just the lay people, just the lay person to, Mm -hmm. to appreciate it you know getting the seats just getting the bums on the seats that's what i'm trying to say and just getting people to watch it as much as you're going to watch girls trip you know if this seriously single was on cinema go watch it as as much in 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 in, in the numbers that you would if you were going to watch girls trip or bridesmaids or whatever rom-com you'd be watching you know just go watch it Mm -hmm. you know and maybe in support of your own people and your own you know, product coming from your own country, maybe you'll find that it's just as good because it's, it's in the support that you come to realize, hey, I love this, you know? So I think we are great competitors of Nollywood. We just don't have a hood. Like we just don't have a South a wood or whatever you may call it, but mm-hmm. we don't need that because then it means that we are, we're copying something. We're following yeah. somebody's, somebody else's mm-hmm. name. We're just a film industry. You know, yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, no, it uh, it makes sense. I mean, I I really I really enjoyed watching uh, seriously single. Uh, I was I was like laughing and and um, yeah. If you if you if you could play any role right now, um, what role would it be? I would actually really really love to play some sort of a superhero like an action because that I haven't done that. I've played a mother, I've played a wife, I've played. So I, I'd really, I'd love to play a superhero or yeah, like an action figure mm-hmm. type. Mm-hmm. Like I'd like to be in Black Panther universe, you know, <laughs> let's just put it out there. Uh, <laughs> let's yeah, just go um, ahead and put it out in the universe. I'd like to be, yeah. to be uh, a good, nice lead, supporting lead, supporting actress on Black Panther. Yeah. So yeah, from 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 this podcast to to Hollywood's ears, <laughs> yes. like they like they often say. Um, so what 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 is uh, for you the main difference between working on a movie and working on a TV show? Hmm. Okay, the difference for me that I can think of from the top of my head is you have the time. A television set is like a sausage factory. We like to call it here Mm -hmm. because you've got 12 scenes. You've got to just shoot, 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 shoot. If you don't get it on the first take, you'll try again in another scene. You just got to keep going, 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 going. 
you get tear stick if you can't cry. You know, like it's just, it's a lot of compromises on a television set because obviously they need a certain number of episodes done mm-hmm. a week because mm-hmm. channel must be happy. But on a film set, I find that the preparation is very important. You know, you get your rehearsals um, and you, you shoot probably like four scenes a day mm-hmm. just because obviously you probably go in single cam. The DOP also has to focus on getting, um, you know, nice establishing shots because you're not in a studio and the directors work personally with you so that you can get the best, you know, take or the best um, yeah. um, interpretation yeah. of, of yeah. that scenario as possible out of you. So I find that it's nice and, and easier on a film set than it is on a television set. Yeah. yeah. So uh, this episode will be uh, released on September 7th. I know it's your birthday, so oh, <laughs> happy <that's> birthday. <laughs> Was that deliberate? Uh, no, because usually, usually um, it, I, I, the episodes are released on the 7th, 14th, 21st, and 28th, uh, because okay. I, I always think like seven is almost like a lucky number for me and also 28. So that's why instead of like when I, when I started the podcast, instead of going like every Friday or every, you know, Wednesday, mm-hmm. I pick those dates. Um, so seven. Um, so that's why I'm going to have like seven, 14, 21st, and 28. Um, and then when I was doing my research, I saw that that it's also your birthday. So I was like, oh. Oh, <laughs> oh wow. thank you for that. Oh, I love that. Oh, yeah. I love that. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So what legacy do you want to leave when this is all set and done? Huh. Like, I, what, do you, what do you want to be remembered for? I want to... I want to have been great at everything that I did, everything that I touch. I want to, to be remembered as the best, the best actress in the world. And I mean that, and I want people to watch back what I've done and say, you know, and, 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 and come up with study formulas and how, how to get that, you know, methods and acting or how, how was she able to do that? You know, and and i want my legacy to have been telling stories that mean something also in work that i'm doing now that i've already started doing my own work creating my own content um i want to to shed a light a bright light on south african just heritage um yeah without saying too much just South African heritage and how beautiful it is, how beautiful Africa is and how, how we grow and how we, we love our own land and our own food and how we can do just about anything. I just want to contribute to shedding that light. I want to be counted as one of the people that did that. So great at acting, great at what I do, and I want to be one of the contributors to shed the light on how beautiful our country is. Yeah, uh, I haven't um, been to uh, South Africa yet. I've had a chance to go to the continent though, uh, Africa, okay. but I really you hope- Where in Africa did you go? I went to uh, Kenya, I went to Tanzania, oh, and I beautiful. certainly hope to visit South Africa, hopefully very soon uh, when the pandemic is over. Uh, but um, yeah, thank you so much for um, for doing this. I really appreciate it. Uh, everyone, please check out her film, uh, Series 16 Go on Netflix and all her other projects on other platforms as well. And um, I wish you the best and stay healthy. And, um, you know, I hope to see your future projects soon. Oh, thank you so much for taking out the time to invite me to your podcast. I know it's been a struggle, but thank you, thank you, thank you. This was very refreshing. And at a time where I thought, "Mm, I might just cancel because of the news of Chadwick Boseman, but um, we continue because he did it and he was sick and none of us knew. Um, And good luck to you too on this 
on your podcast and Thanks. I just hope it grows. And I'm like, hey, I was one of the people back when, you know. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, all right. Take care.